Hallelujah. 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 All praises to the Most High God. The brother spoke mighty in the spirit. We're just going to continue on with that to land me back off of that. The brother just brought out a mighty message. Uh, we come out here to drop these seeds and, and, and hope they will sprout in our, in our beloved brothers and sisters, the children of Israel's spirit, and flourish. You know, we got to come out here and win souls back to the Lord. Give me, uh, give me John 10 and 27. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 17. You know, just some basic precepts just to, just to open up as a foundation, you know. Uh, Yachanan uh, got, got a chance to talk to some uh, some Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters and uh, uh, seemingly a sister from the tribe of Judah, you know, drop some seeds on them people and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll respond through the Spirit. Go ahead, uh, King. This is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 27. Bring it out. Words of Hamashiach. Uh-huh. My sheep hear my voice. What did the Lord say? My, my sheep, sheep hear my voice. voice. You see that? So if if we are in fact his sheep, we are going to hear his voice. Meaning what? Hear his instructions, his laws, his statutes, his commandments, his judgments. Everything that is in this word of God that he left for our learning. If we are in fact his sheep, we are going to hear and apply. Because remember, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word, our faith then is established, then we have to practice out and rehearse the righteous acts. Right. Go ahead. How you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? A couple minutes of your time for the word of God today, brother? All right, all right. See that? Our people got to give some time to the Lord. You know, we come out here and try to give our people hope and inspiration through the scriptures. Um, but, you know, once again, he said his sheep hear his voice. That's Go ahead. Fine. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, uh -huh. and they follow me. You see that? And he says he knows them. He knows his sheep, and his sheep are going to follow him. But how do we know the Lord? Give me First John 2 and 3. How do we know the Lord before you get Matthew 3? This is the book of First John chapter 2 and verse 3. Bring it out. And hereby we do know that we know him uh -huh. if we keep his commandments. You see that? This is how we authenticate our relationship with the Son of God, is if... You see that? There's stipulations to the relationship. Okay? And anyone who's in a relationship should understand that there's laws that govern a relationship. If I'm married to my wife, which I am, I'm not going to go commit adultery on her. I'm not going to lie to her. I'm not going to hit her over the head with a baseball bat. There's laws uh, to govern a relationship. So the Lord is telling us the same thing. He says, this is how we know we know him. If... We keep his commandments. Go ahead. You want me to get verse 4? Verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, uh -huh. is a liar. Is a what? Is, is a, a liar. liar. Right? And the truth is not in him. You see that? And the truth is not in him. Now, what is the truth? Psalm 119, verse 142. He says, the truth is not in him. You see, remember... He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So if, in other words, for us to have a proper relationship with Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, meaning the Most High God and His only begotten Son, is if we keep the commandments. Psalms 119, 142. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Bring it out. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. You see that? It never changed. God doesn't change. He says, I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Malachi, the third chapter. He says his righteousness is everlasting. Go ahead. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. You see that? So that is what the truth is. So when the Bible says, uh, he says, this is how we know we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Meaning they're not really obeying God's law, statutes, and commandments. Therefore, they're not in a relationship with him. Right. The Bible says in Psalms, the fifth chapter, I believe it is, he says, the foolish shall not stand in his sight. That's right. And he hated all workers of iniquity. You mean by Matthew, the third chapter, starting at verse, uh, Matthew 4, 17. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 17. Bring it out. From that time, Yahweh Shai began to preach and to say, repent. What did the Lord say? Repent. Uh -huh. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is at hand. We are in the last days, but see, people people keep prolonging his coming. Oh, they've been saying that for 2,000 years. They've been saying that since I was a kid. My great-great-grandmother was saying the same thing. 
Is that Bible even real? Where, where is this Messiah that everyone keeps talking about? Where is this Jesus character at, right? Go ahead. Uh, and Yahawashai, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, right? Simon called Peter, uh -huh. and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, right? for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me. Do what now? Follow, Follow me. me. See that? He said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So when he told Andrew and Peter, he says, come and follow me. Let's see if they did that. Go ahead. And I will make you fishers of men. And he says, I will make you fishers of men. Meaning we got to go out and deliver this word and go wake up God's people and bid them back to the marriage. Go ahead. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. You see that? They didn't hesitate. They didn't ask questions about, well, who are you really? You know, uh, you know, I got something to do. You know, I got to go to work. You know, my, my, my wife at home wants me to bring home some, uh, some, some sugar. I got to stop by the store first. No, they heard the Messiah's voice and straightway they followed him. You see that? We can't delay. We got to make haste when it comes to keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. When we hear this word, we shouldn't put it back on the uh, on the back burner. We shouldn't say, I, I'll have time for that later. Or I don't got no time for that right now. Because that's the foolish mind. That's the foolish way to think, to say, God is, is, is I don't have no time for God. How you doing, brother? You got a couple minutes of your time for the word of God? Two minutes of your time? You so-called Native American? Yeah. All right, I'll praise it to the most high. How you doing, brother? All right, I'll praise it to the most high. Hey, um, so before you leave, brother, are you familiar with the Native Americans being one of the tribes of Israel? Have you ever heard that? No. Never heard that, okay. My wife is so-called Native American. The reason I say so-called. That's first. That's first. Now watch this. So check this out right here. You see this right here? So he's from the Nest First tribe, Chief Joseph, right? That's right. Chief Joseph came from the Nest First tribe. Are you familiar with the Assyrian tablet? Okay, so let's show the history on how the Native Americans first came to America. So let me give you a quick little bit of history, brother. The word America goes back to a white man by the name of Amerigo Vespucci. That's a name or a term that was placed upon our people, but that's not who we are. We're much greater than those terms that they place on us. So what you're gonna find out is that God says that the so-called Native Americans, I say so-called because that's not your God-given name, that you are God's chosen people. You are special in the eyes of the Lord. But there's a reason why we've been suffering so much through our lands being uh, stolen, through all the rape, rob, and murder, being pushed on reservations, slavery, all these things happened to us because God said that this would happen for a reason. So let me show you the history on our people first coming to America. Now watch this. My wife is Spokane tribe. Okay, she's she, Spokane is how you would say it in the Salish tongue, okay? Okay. Um, Native Americans, so-called, they believe that they're from this land. They're not originally from this land. They were just the first ones here. But God says that we go back to a much uh, greater and uh, uh, ancient land before America. You guys were the first ones here, okay, our people. But at the end of the day, we are not originally from here. So let me show you. Give me 2 Ezra 13, starting at verse 40. Watch this, brother. 2 Ezra Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40. Bring it out. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land uh -huh. in the time of O.C. the king. Right. Whom Salamanassar, the king of Assyria. The king of who? The king of Assyria. The king of Assyria. This is why in your tribe, brother, you guys have what is called the Assyrian tablet that was passed down through the ages through your guys' tribe, the Nest Perse tribe. Where did you guys get that from? because you guys were taken captive by the Assyrians 2,700 years ago. Go ahead. Whom Salmanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Uh -huh. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. Right. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. Of the, of the, of the heathen. heathen. Of the people that oppressed us, brother. Yeah. Go ahead and go forth into a further country right. where never mankind dwelt. So this is the account. This is the record that God, okay? I know the, uh, our brothers call him the great spirit, which he is the great spirit, okay? Ah. He's given us the account of what happened to our people 
a couple millenniums ago, before we got to the land of America, like I said, our brothers and sisters populated this land. You guys were the first ones here. We were the first ones here. But God says, before we got here, we were taken captive by an ancient nation. They held us captive. Go ahead. That they might there keep their statutes, right? Keep our heritage, keep our customs, our traditions. Go ahead. Which they never kept in their own land. Right. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. Right. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood. Right, meaning he gave us passage over the waters to get here. Go ahead. Till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. Right. And the same region is called Arsaret. Arsaret. So before this land was called America, because remember the word America, Joel. Hand me that uh, poster with Amerigo Vespucci on the back of it. I think it's on the back of that one right there. Before this land was called America, it was called Arsarit, according to God. So right here, these words right here, America comes from uh, Amerigo Vespucci, like I just said. So that's not, that's not who we are, brother, okay? Those are terms that the white man put on us, right? Go ahead. Then dwelt they there until the latter time. Which is now. We are still here to this present day. God said that this would happen, that we would still be in the land that, that we inhabited from centuries ago. But we came over here initially because we were escaping captivity. Go ahead. And now when they shall begin to come. So the Lord has given us the understanding, the prophecy. Now give me Genesis 49 and 19. Watch what God said about the Native Americans. Because our ancient forefather, about 5,000 years ago, we go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the chosen line that God chose, okay? He says this is where we go back to, Genesis 49, 19. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 19. So read verse 1 for a second. And Jacob called unto his sons uh -huh. and said, Gather yourselves together, right? that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. In what days? In the last, last days. days. So it's talking about today. This was the prophecy that God said would be happening today, brother. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob. We are the sons of Jacob. Now, when I say we, I mean the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. We are brothers. Even though we look a little different, like this brother right here, he's Hispanic. This brother would be a so-called African-American. Myself, out. I'm African-American, and I got a little Native American in myself, too. We look a little different, but we go back to the same forefather a out. long time ago. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together and, and hear, ye sons of Jacob. God. Verse 19. Gad. Who? Gad. Who? Gad. Gad. Gad is one of the sons of Jacob. Gad is who you would call the Native Americans today. That's right. Gad, look what the Lord said about Gad. Go ahead. Gad, a troop shall overcome him. So God said in the last days, meaning this last five, 600 years, that Gad would be overcome by a troop. Now we have to do logic here. We have to just reason and, and track back history. What people conquered the Native Americans? You know who it was, right? The European colonizers, right? They came over here, they pretended like it was peace, and then they stabbed our brothers and sisters in the back, stole all this land, almost genocided our people. Watch this. Bring it out! Let me show you some information, brother. Get up real quick. Hey, brother, we, we don't just study just the Bible, but we study archaeology. We study archaeology, history, and prophecy to make sure that what we're teaching is the truth. So when you when we when we study these books, it correlates with the scriptures to prove that our brothers and sisters are in fact the twelve tribes of the lost uh, lost tribes of Israel. We're not just these bywords that people have said. So this is all these books have all this information. Now watch this. Open open uh, this book right here. I want to show the brother something. The very first page. Let's see. Bear with me, brother. Bear with me for a second. I find it real quick. Read. Um, Maybe. Uh, can I get going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll praise okay. it. What's your name, brother? Uh, Aaron. Aaron? Aaron. Yeah. You got a broken hand or something? Yep. Okay, all right. I'm Brother Yuri up. Well, know this, brother. You are from the tribe of Gad. Okay, do some more research on it, okay? 
we must come back to keeping the commandments of God and the faith in Yahweh Shai. Now, we've been taught that this is a white man's book, bro. It, that can be that can be further from the truth. It prophesies judgment against those people. They got their destruction coming. So we have to come back and read this book for ourselves and learn of it. You are chosen of God, Aaron. You're you're an Israelite from the tribe of Gad, brother. Okay. That's all right. Do some more research, brother. Peace and blessings. All, all right. All right. All right. All praise. Hey, just yeah, small seeds at a time, right? Yeah. You know. Spirit bearing witness too. Yeah, yeah. The brother, the brother gave us ten minutes of his time, and you know that ten minutes can really make a big impact. How y'all doing today? Good. How are you? All right. All right. Y'all got a couple minutes. Y'all's time for the word of God. Y'all believe in God? Absolutely. Okay, all praises. If you don't mind me asking, uh, what is your nationality or, or your ethnicity on your father's side? Native American. Native American. All okay, all praises. We just got that talking yeah, to one of our brothers. You get a flyer for the sister. Okay, have you ever have you ever heard? Okay, before I ask this question, let me ask you this first. Do you know where the term America comes from? No. Okay. It comes from a European by the name of Amerigo Vespucci. He was a map maker, an Italian map maker. Uh, during the time of Columbus. You know how they say Columbus discovered this land, supposedly? Supposedly. Supposedly, right? We know that's a lie. Well, our, our brothers and sisters have been here for a much long time before he even got here, right? Yeah. So the word America actually goes back to an Italian, just like Christopher Columbus, by the name of Amerigo Vespucci. See the sister? Yeah. Okay, these are, these are what you call bywords in the scriptures. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Oh. And, um... So when we ask our brothers and sisters and they say Native American, they're not realizing that they're actually identifying themselves with the name that goes back to that man, Amerigo Vespucci. So if we understand that that's not who we are, then who are we, right? You, you said you believe in God, right? So let's see what God says about the matter. Before you get that, give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Watch this, sister. Our mission is to come out here and wake up the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans to teach them their God-given heritage and nationality and bring them back to God because our people have been separated and removed from righteousness and we must return back into the Father and His only begotten Son. That's right. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox knoweth his owner. Now God says the ox, meaning a, a bull or, or a bison. He says he knows who his owner is, right? And the ass, his master's crib. Now, an ass is a donkey, okay, in the Bible. So it says a donkey and a bull, they both know who they belong to and where they live. Well, watch this. What? Israel, what now? Israel uh -huh. doth not know. God says the true Israelites, the real biblical Israelites, he says they don't know who they are. Go ahead. My people doth not consider. Nor do they consider. Jeremiah 17 and 4, and then give me Amos 3. So God said his people in these last days wouldn't understand who they are. But it was prophesied that we would start to wake up one person at a time before the uh, return of the Messiah. That's Go right. Ahead. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Uh -huh. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So God said that his people would discontinue from their heritage. Like, for instance, our forefathers didn't speak English. Our forefathers didn't observe Christmas and Thanksgiving. Our forefathers didn't pledge allegiance to a flag that did nothing but conquer us. You understand, sister? So God said that this would happen to us, though, that we would be removed from our heritage. Okay, go ahead. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. Right. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies thine enemies right. in the land which thou knowest not so this was this was the prophecy that the lord said would happen to us is that we would have to serve what god calls an enemy in a land that we knew not now when you go further back to about 2025 bc our people wasn't in this land yet but our our god told us through the scriptures that our brothers and sisters the native americans and hispanics would come to this land because they were escaping the Assyrian captivity. So give me Amos 3. Now, why did this happen, though? Why did we lose our heritage? Why did we lose our identity? Why did we lose our land, our language, our culture, all these things that has happened to us? Why is our people pushed on reservations and living in the ghettos? Why are these things happening to us? Watch this, Amos 3 from the top. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Now, God says against you, meaning he has an issue with his children. Go ahead. O children of Israel, uh -huh. 
against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, right. saying, you only have I known. What did the Lord say? You, you only, only have I known. Right. Of all the families of the earth. So God said, out of all his creation, out of all his children, all the people that are upon the earth, he says, you, you Israelites, he says, you only have I known. Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you. you will what now? I will punish you right? for all your iniquity. So now, he's speaking to the Israelites. Now, what you're going to find out, sister, is that we're, we are not Native American. We are not Hispanic. We are not African American. We are, in fact, the 12 tribes of the House of Israel. That's predicated on prophecy, history, and archaeology. And we can prove this emphatically. God said that we would be removed from our heritage. Why? Because we are being punished for our iniquity. So now I gotta ask you, sister, what's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, nice to meet you, Jennifer. I'm Brother Urio. Pleasure to meet you. So, Jennifer, are you familiar with the word iniquity? It's okay if you don't know. That's why we're out here to teach. I do, I am, but I just didn't explain it to you. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. And that's a humble answer, and I love humility. We don't have. We're, we're human. We don't know everything, right? So it's it's okay that we have to learn. That's how that's how we are brought up from a baby all the way up through life. We have to learn daily, right? So watch this. Let's see what iniquity is. Let's get Psalms 38 and 18. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 38 and verse 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. Right? I will be sorry for my sin. So iniquity and sin is synonymous. They mean the same exact thing. So now that leads me to my next question. Do you know what sin is? What do you think it is, sister? Sin is anything that, um, anything that you do that separates you from God. I like that. I like that. That's right. So, okay, I, I like I like that answer. It's 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 close, but there's a little bit more specific to it. Um, like for instance, if I step on your shoe, is that gonna separate me from God? Well, because you're treating one of God's. Right. Now, how do we know how to treat one another? Where do we get that from? I can quote the verse, but God said to love God with all your heart. There you go. There you go. And love your neighbor as yourself. There you go. Now, 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 what does that mean, though? It means that you should treat other people the way that you want to be I like treated. it. I like oh, it. Man. I like it. You Okay, let's show this. Is all good answers. Let's get, let's get 1 John 3 and 4, and then we'll get the scripture that you quoted. Go ahead. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Right. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. So when we sin, when we commit a sin, it's going against God's law, statutes, and commandments. So when we came into covenant with God, when Moses went up to Mount Sinai and God gave him the lively oracles or the laws, he came back to deliver the laws on how to deal with one another, how to love each other, and how to love God correctly. So give me 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, and then Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. So we have to walk as Christ walked. I meant 2 John verse 6, but that's a good one too. 2 John verse 6. We got to walk as Christ walked. The book of 2 John and verse 6. And this is love. And this is love, right? That we walk after his commandments. His what now? His commandments. Right. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, right? ye should walk in it. So we have to walk in the commandments because this is what love is. Now, what she had quoted, Matthew 7, verse 21, Christ is essentially saying the same exact thing. Go ahead. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 21. The words of Hamashiach, Christ. The words of Christ, because how you say his name in the Hebrew is Hamashiach Yahawashai. The letter J didn't exist until 1524, so you couldn't even say Jesus in 1501. Yeah. So the, his actual pronunciation, it's like if I called you uh, Thomas. That's not your name, right? So his actual name is Yahawashai. So that's why we say that. Go ahead. Uh, 17, 12, or 7 and 12. See, 7 and verse, yeah, 7 verse 12. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, uh -huh. do ye even so to them. And that's what they call the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto 
That's right. So we, we get that understanding from God's law, statutes, and commandments. He says, don't lie to your brother, don't steal, don't kill, all these good things that God said to apply in our life to have a proper relationship with, with each other and with God, right? Yeah. So now... Everything you do, the least of these, you do unto me. That's right. That's right, sister. That's right. We got to care for one another, right? Yeah. Uh, that's where that's where Cain went off is when he said, am I my brother's keeper? The answer should have been, I am my brother's keeper. Yeah. But he killed his brother. And so he was not accepted of God because he did so. So now going back to the point with Amos 3, read one more time. Uh, Amos 3, about iniquity. Because God, he, he, he posed the question, um, why this is happening to us? Why we're in the conditions that we're in as a people? Go ahead. Amos chapter 3 from the top. Verse 2. Verse 2. So you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Why did all this happen to us? Our lands being stolen. Now we're on reservations and in ghettos, shot by the police every day. We're the last hired, the first fired, uh, slavery for centuries. All these things happen to us as a people as a direct result of God saying, I'm going to do this to you because you guys broke the covenant. You broke the laws that we agreed to. Go ahead. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, God asked the question. He says, can we walk together except we be agreed? Now, remember, we just read in 1 John 2 and 6. He says, we have to walk even as Christ walked. Wow. So in order for us to have a proper relationship, like if I said, Jennifer, me and you, let's walk over to this black pole. And we agree to do that, but then I go that way. I broke that agreement, correct? So that's why God is asking the question. He says, can we, can we sincerely walk together unless we're in agreement, meaning we think alike, we, we, we speak alike, we are keeping the oaths and everything of that nature. That's what God is essentially saying. So why did we fall out of our heritage and all these atrocities happen to us? Let's show her, let's get Deuteronomy 28, 15. Because now I want to show you the Native Americans in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these, what? All all these, these curses, curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God forewarned us. He said, if we chose not to hearken, meaning hear his word, his law, statutes, and commandments, that all these curses would overcome us and overtake us. Now listen to some of these curses, sister, and you tell me who these apply to. Get the next verse. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So the first curse that God said would happen to us is that we would be cursed in the city. Now this goes back to our lands being stolen, being stuck on reservations and in ghettos, uh, all the police shootings that's happening to our people, the last hire, the first fire, we glorify murder in our music. Most of our people are on Section 8 housing, food stamps, uh, drug addiction. Now, some may say, well, all people have those problems, but not all people struggle as bad as we do, not even close. Everything that has happened to us as a people, it's not even close to what these other nations are experiencing and their prosperity, their success. Like we don't own the businesses and their empire like 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 they do, right? We we are subject to this day. You got a question? No, we gotta go. Okay, okay. I I'll... love conversing with you. I think this is a great conversation. Oh, I just great. don't have the time to stay. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay. I appreciate it. But well, it we appreciate your time. You. So to do some more research, uh your you, your tribe that you actually come from in the Bible is one of the tribes of Israel, which comes from the uh actually the tribe of Gad. My wife is a so called Native American as well. This brother is a so called Hispanic this brother is a so-called African-American, but we're all brothers and sisters under Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, meaning Jesus the Christ. Yes. Okay, so you're an Israelite from the tribe of Gad. That is your God-given nationality and ethnicity. So we got to keep the commandments and the faith in Christ in these last days, okay? All right, all right sister. Peace and blessings to you. You as well. All praise. All right, all right, all right. Hey, little, 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 uh, little bit of someone's time can make a big difference in our walk with the Lord, you know? Right. Where we at, King? Time wise. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, I'll praise it to the most high. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing when our people just give us a couple minutes of our time. Uh, two, two, uh, uh, Gad, two, two members of the tribe of Gad came back to back, you know, and just, just got a quick dose of the precepts. And, you know, sometimes that's all it needs. And all, we just got to get it water. See, when a seed, when a seed is planted in the ground, it may seem so small, so insignificant. 
but with the right nutrients and the right weather, the right watering, that seed can sprout into a mighty crop, to a mighty field, and it can, and it can produce more. One seed can produce another seed, and on and on it goes. And before you know it, you got a whole forest. That's right. You got trees and plants and uh, uh, just 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 flourishing all over the place. But see, the problem is the majority of our people don't want to hear the voice of God. They want to be stiff-necked and stubborn and turn a, a blind eye and a deaf ear to God's word. But if we just give God a moment of our time and believe his word, we shall be healed. Give me, Psalm, give me Psalms 14 and uh, verse 1 real quick. Psalms 14 and 1. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 14 and verse 1. Come. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. You see that? So we have to, like when I asked the sister, I asked her, I said, do you believe in God? She said, yes. And you could tell she had some biblical background because she was actually quoting scripture. Right. So, you know, the Lord will utilize our upbringing and, you know, he'll call out to us through our life. Even, even if we didn't know who we are, all that stuff was working together for the good. All those bits of information throughout our life, the Lord was utilizing to bring us to a certain point. But... The fool, however, says in his heart, there is no God. That's why God said that is a foolish way to think. Go ahead. They are corrupt. They are what? They are corrupt. Right? They have done abominable works. And the Lord says he hateth all abomination. That's right. For those who want to uh, commit sin, God says he hates that. Go ahead. There is none that doeth good. Right? The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand uh -huh. and seek God. And seek God. You see, a lot of people's problem is because they haven't seen God or they feel like they haven't found him yet that there is no God or, or he's of the least importance. But the Lord told us in his scriptures that it's a journey and that we have to continuously seek him. Give me Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 and 13. You see, so the Lord is looking down from heaven to see if any will seek after God, if anyone will seek him. Jeremiah 29, 13, King Babkashah. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. In Proverbs 29 and 2. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. With all our heart. He says we will find him when we search for him with all our heart, meaning our mind. Where is our mind? The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. That's right. So when will we find God? When we seek him with our whole heart. Go ahead. Is that on that? Yeah, so we, in order to find the Lord, he's saying it's a process. It's a journey. We got to make sure we're taking the steps to get to him. Anything that is worth having takes work. That's right. Takes time. And God says there's nothing um, uh, worth more than him. So he says, you shall find me when you shall seek me with your whole heart. So I mean, we got to put... Uh, uh, a sincere and diligent effort into searching for God, meaning keeping of his commandments, reading his word, applying the faith, doing the things that God is uh, commanding us to do and requiring of us. The reason why we are suffering so bad as so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans is because we're not allowing God to be in our life, but we're allowing the heathen to rule over us. We'd rather be subject to the oppressor, to the enemy, rather than be subject to the true and living God. Bring it out. And we want to cry and sigh and wonder why we're not uh, getting nowhere in life. Give me this, Proverbs 29 and 2. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 12, verse 8. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. You see that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And there is no one more righteous than God the Father. Okay, he is perfectly righteous. The Bible says he is holy. Okay? So when we allow God to be in our life, which we, he's there whether we like it or not, but the thing about it is when we're in sin, he separates himself from us. But he is in control whether we like it or not. So we have to understand who is the supreme God, the governor of heaven and earth. It is God the Father, okay? But when we want to listen to the lies and deception and apply that as our rulership, then there is no peace there. Go ahead. What? When the wicked beareth rule. When the wicked beareth rule, these other nations are those who are breaking God's commandments. The people mourn. The people what? The, the people, people mourn. The people are in mourning. Why we had to go through subjection and slavery, 
all the atrocities that our people face, all these things are happening because we're not putting God above us as we should be doing. He says we have to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee. But see, our brothers and sisters are doing it backwards. They're submitting themselves the, to the devil, and as a result, God is turning them back to them. And we want to wonder why we just can't get right in this society, why we have to march and, and uh, cry inside for justice and peace. Like, uh, just for instance, um, I just shared with uh, my brothers just yesterday, matter of fact, another brother, another every single day, another brother just got killed by the police. Uh, his name was, uh, excuse me, let, let me collect my thoughts on that. His name was Robert Fortson. Robert Fortson, brother answered the door and the police officer didn't give him not even a second before he pulled out his gun and killed the brother, shot him six times, dropped him dead in his doorstep. This is what we're up against in this society because our people collectively have not submitted themselves to the will of God. But I want to be clear, God is looking down from heaven and he's seeing the wickedness of these nations and how they're oppressing God's children. Give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 before you get Psalms 12 and 8. Okay, Our brother uh, Robert Fortin has so many, Freddie Gray, uh, I mean, there's so many of them, so many. Brianna Taylor, Tamir Rice. Come on, give me some other names, brothers. Um, George Floyd. There's so many of them. We, our people are getting countless. There's too many to count. One of our people are unjustly getting killed by the police. I think it's every 24 hours in this country. That's just in this country. And that's the stuff that's just recorded. That's not the stuff that is, is still a mystery, but God is watching everything. Go ahead, King. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. And we should be mad at the oppression. But God is telling us on why this is happening. But what we should be mad about is our people not repenting and turning back to God because the oppression exists only because we have not submitted to God. So the Lord said it should make us mad. When we see these things, when we see our brothers and sisters getting killed by the police, it should disturb us greatly. It should sadden us. It should upset us. These people got a day that's coming for everything that they have done to us. But more importantly, our people need to repent and turn back to God. That's right. Surely oppression make it the wise man. Give me Psalms 12 and 8. Give me uh, Psalms, um, I think it's 2 and 8 actually as well. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms chapter 12 and verse 8. The wicked walk on every side. You see that there on every side. Just like David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You see, David understood that the surroundings of this world is the shadow of death. That's right. But he had understood the importance of having the rod and the staff with him, which was the word of God. He says, I will fear no evil, for, for, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. So here it is, David again. He's saying the wicked walk on every side. They're all around. Go That's ahead. That's right. When the vilest men are exalted. When the vilest men are exalted. Didn't we just read Proverbs 29 and 2? When the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. That's right. So when the wicked are exalted, this is what's happening. They're they're putting forth unrighteous decrees. Okay. They they will they'll, they'll kill one of our people, then say not guilty. Give me second uh or give me Zechariah 11 and 5. Go ahead, King. Psalms 10 and 8. Psalms 10 and 8, actually. 10 and 8. Salah, 10 and 8. Give me Zechariah 11 and 5. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 10 and verse 8. Bring it out. He sitteth in the lurking places. What does he do? He sitteth in the lurking places. Look at that now. A person who's sitting in the lurking places is plotting and scheming. Plotting on blood like a lion does with a gazelle. Like a lion does with a zebra. He sits in the lurking places. Go ahead. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. Right. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent, right? His eyes are privily set against the poor. Now, who is the poor? Give me Isaiah 32 and 14. Who is the poor? Okay, his eyes are set against the poor. He sits in the lurking places. This is talking about Esau, okay? This is talking about these other nations, but chiefly Esau, who is murdering our people at a high rate. That is why our beloved brother, okay, Robert Fortson just got killed in his doorway unjustly as so many of our brothers and sisters go ahead king isaiah chapter 32 and verse 13 14 salakia and verse 14 
because the palaces are 1432 uh, Isaiah 1432 sometimes I get scriptural dyslexia it's all right this is the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 32 what shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord hath found in Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. And the poor of his people. You got something to say, man? Hey, how about you just go over there, devil? You see that? Give this man, this man with his wickedness. Give me 2 Chronicles 36 and 16. See, when, they, when this word going, give me give me Psalms 2 before we get there. Give me Psalms 2 from the top. 2 Chronicles 36 and 16. People, people, when this word go forth, them spirits get roused up. Got Psalms still going. You, you bring that out first. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 1. Bring it out. Why do the heathen rage? Why do what? Why, Why do, do the, the heathen, heathen rage? rage? What was that man doing? Rage. rage. You see that? Why do the heathen rage? Go ahead. And the people imagine a vain thing. And they imagine a vain thing. Go ahead. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. You see that they are against God. They take counsel to, with themselves against God. Go ahead. And against his anointed. And against his anointed. So the heathen are raging. They don't want to hear this word. Remember, the Bible says they know, but they have but a short time. The devil knows they, he has but a short time. Give me Second Chronicles 36 and 16. This is the book of Second Chronicles chapter 36 and verse 16. Bring it out. But they mock the messengers of Yahweh uh -huh. and despise his words. You see that? And that's what it is. You heard that loud mouth devil mocking the messengers of God and despising God's word. Go ahead. And misuse his prophets right? until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. See that? So God ain't playing. Don't mock the messengers of God. When people do that, all they're doing is marking themselves. Okay. There was children in the Bible that mocked Elijah, and the Lord sent, the, sent a she-bear to kill him. I think it was like 42 children or something like that. The Lord ain't playing about mocking his servants, his, his prophets, his messengers. Now, back to the point, though, our people are being gunned down and killed at a, at a high rate. Give me Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Go back to, yeah, bring that, Zechariah 11 and 5. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna have him grab this one before you get that. Lamentations four, start at verse sixteen, actually. Uh, this is the book of Lamentations, chapter four, starting at verse sixteen. The anger of the Lord hath divided them; he will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. Right. They favored not the elders. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. You see that? Our eyes are looking for help around this society, and it's not there. Why? Because we have to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord. Now, when I say us, I mean us as a nation. Those that are in the truth, they understand where their help comes from. We got to look unto the hills to where our help comes from, which is the Lord. Go ahead. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. You know, our people going to the voting polls and voting for the next president or for the next governor the next mayor thinking that all their problems are going to be resolved. That's not where our help is going to come from. The Lord said, don't put a king over you. That is not of your brother. That's right. Go ahead. They hunt our steps. They do what? They, they hunt, hunt our, our steps. steps. You see that? I got a question, uh, sir. I got a question, uh, miss. No, thank you. No, thank you. you guys no, can't thank answer just one question. Just one question. Come on. Right. We're so-called Americans, too. I believe that, yeah. So yeah, called. but we're really the Hebrew Israelites. So come on, let's talk. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Yeah, and that's what's happening. They're hunting our steps. That brother got killed in his door. The door of his house. He opened up the door and got shot six times. How many of our people are being shot with their hands in the air, shot just sitting in their driver's seat of their car, shot walking away, shot in the back, shot in their sleep. Mm -hmm. This keeps happening. They're killing us because they, give me, drop that, give me Ezekiel 35 and five, watch this. And then they, then they got the audacity, they'll kill one of our people and say, give them two weeks paid leave uh. and you know, they're, they're not guilty. Go ahead, King. 
Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. Bring it out. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. You see that? They have had a perpetual hatred. It goes, this goes all the way back to the inception of Esau. When Esau pursued to kill his brother Jacob, nothing has changed. Go ahead. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Meaning what? When our punishment was supposed to be over, they kept it going. They keep killing us and gunning us down as a people. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, right? and blood shall pursue thee. Right? Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And that's the judgment that the Lord has declared, that these people's blood must be shed. Give me Numbers 35 and 33. Go ahead, Zechariah 11 and 5. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse 5. God. Whose possessors slay them. Right. And hold themselves not guilty. And do what now? And oh, hold themselves God. not guilty. You see that? They kill our people and then they say not guilty. They're acting in self-defense. This is what they like to say. He, he was reaching for a gun. This is what they like to say. They kill our people and then they say not guilty. How often is this happening? Now, I will say this. Some of them are getting caught now because this is the age of camera phones. Camera phones are catching a lot of people, a lot of these crooked police, killing our brothers and sisters. But even so, their unrighteous decrees, they're still trying to justify their wicked deeds. Uh, give me Psalms, I think it's 97 and 20. I think it's Psalms 97 and 20. You see that? Whose possessors slay them. They are slaying our people, and then they hold themselves not guilty. Uh, might be, uh, bear with me. Go ahead, King. Numbers chapter 35 and, and verse 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. You see that? God says you cannot pollute the land because blood defileth the land. So the Lord told us that if anyone sheds man's blood from the beginning in Genesis, their blood must be shed. That's right. Hold on one second, Doc. I'm trying to pull up this precept. Psalms 94 and 20, actually. Psalms 94 and 20. Go ahead, King. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein. Right. But by the blood of him that shed it. That's the only way that this is going to be a righteous get back. We don't want 40 acres and a mule. That's not going to fix the problem for 300 million murders, land stolen, centuries of slavery. Okay. That's yeah. not going to fix the problem. The only reparations that we're looking for is blood because that's the righteous judgment of the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. If they want to give us reparations, we're going to take it. Okay. Oh. And try to build a better society with our people. But at the end of the day, that's not enough. That's right. The only way to make this right is if their blood is shed. That's right. You see, they put forth all these unrighteous decrees. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Got a couple minutes of time for the word of God, brother? No, no, I'm actually going to go. All right, well, notice as you're walking away, brother. Take a flyer at least, would you? No, no, no. All right, all right. Well, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are God's chosen people, brother. We must keep the commandments and the faith in Christ in these last days. Go ahead, bring that out, Psalms 94 right. and 20. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 20. Uh-huh. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, right. which frameth mischief by a law? At what? By a law. You see, they frameth mischief by a law. They kill our people, and then they say not guilty. But let one of us step on a police officer's shoes. We get beat over the head with a billy cub and get charged with assault. Yeah. But they can kill us in cold blood on camera, and they say not guilty. Madness. This is, yeah, madness. But the Lord got a day that's coming for them. He has a recompense that's coming for them. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 16 from the top, King. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 from the top. How much longer? Okay. About to close it up. Go ahead, King. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 1. Bring it out. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Right? Woe be unto thee, Egypt. Right? And Syria. Right? So this is God professing judgment upon America and all the associated countries. Go ahead. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack. Right? And hair 
Bewail your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. You see that? Your destruction is at hand. God got their number. He said that day is coming, a day of judgment, a dark and gloomy day that God has professed upon these heathen nations. Go ahead. A word is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, right? and who may quench it? A fire is sent among them, and who shall quench it? No one is going to quench that fire on that day. Go oh. ahead. Plagues are sent unto you, right? And what is he that may drive them away? Right? May any man drive away in hunger, lion, in the wood? It's like it. May any man drive away in hungry lion in the wood, right? Or may anyone quench the fire in stubble? So God is asking a question. It's a rhetorical question. He says, if a, if, a, if a lion is hungry, can you drive a hungry lion away? No, because when a lion is hungry, it's, it's going to go after its prey, period. Go ahead. When it hath begun to burn. So he's saying when that fire, when that fire gets, uh, when it goes forth, you're not going to stop it. You're not going to quench it. You're not going to put it out. This is the day of judgment, the day of reckoning, the day of recompense huh. that the Lord has prophesied all through his scriptures. Go ahead. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Of a strong archer. Before you get that, give me uh, Psalms 11 from the top. He says, an arrow that is shot from a strong archer. Go ahead. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues. Right. And who is he that can drive them away? Who can drive them away? Give me um, Zechariah chapter 14 and 12. Before you get that, give me Zechariah chapter 14 and 12. He's going to send that arrow shot by a strong archer. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 14 and verse 12. Bring it out. And this shall be the plague. And this shall be the plagues, right? Wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. That have fought against his people. Go That's ahead. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. While they stand upon their feet. Now, what could do that? An ICBM missile, nuclear destruction. Go Bring ahead. It out. And their eyes shall consume away in their hope. Just like, just like on that movie, The Terminator 2, when Sarah Connor was holding the fence in her dream, uh. she was standing there and all the fire just burnt her as she was standing up. That's uh. nuclear fire. This is what God is prophesying in the scriptures that's going to come upon the wicked kingdom. Go ahead. Uh. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. You see that? Now give me um, Isaiah 54, verse 16. Before you get to Isaiah 54, verse 16. These are the plagues that are coming upon the people. These are the arrows that's going to fly against the wicked of the earth. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. Bring it out. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals uh -huh. in the fire, and that bringeth forth an in instrument, what? an instrument right. for his work. Right. And I have created the waster to destroy. To what? To destroy. This is talking about those missiles. God says he created the scientists to create these missiles to bring the destruction that has prophesied. That's right. Psalm chapter 11 from the top, King. This is the book of Psalm chapter 11 and verse 1. Oh, yeah. In the Lord I put my trust. How say ye to my soul? Flee as a bird to your mountain. Right. Flee as a bird to the mountains, right? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. The wicked what? They bend their bow. The Lord is going to cause these nations to turn on each other, but they're chiefly going to turn on America. Go ahead. They make ready their arrow upon the string, uh -huh. that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. It's not talking about a literal arrow, people. Uh. This ain't talking about bows and arrows. This is an allegory of speaking of them fiery missiles that God is going to shoot. That's Go right. ahead. Verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed. How is a bow and arrow going to destroy the foundations? Bring it out. What, what type of arrow would destroy the foundations? That's right. Nuclear destruction is the arrows that it's referring to. Go ahead. What can the righteous do? Right. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Right. His eyes behold. His eyelids try right? the children of men. You see that? He's seeing everything. His eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. That's and they're not going to escape. Everything that they have done to God's people, there's going to be a righteous recompense. It is a righteous recompense to bring tribulation upon those that trouble us, the Bible says. Okay? So he has not forgotten all the affliction, all the 
rape, rob, and murder that has happened to our people. Blood has defiled this land and spiritually Sodom and Egypt. And God says they got to get that judgment. They got to get that payback. Malachi 4 and 1. What have you hold? Oh, uh, yeah, hold that. Malachi 4 and 1. We're going to close with uh, Isaiah 54, 17. Uh, the book of Malachi, chapter 4 and verse 1. Bring it out. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Uh -huh. And all the proud, yea, and all the and all that do wickedly and all that do wickedly all the proud and all that do wickedly go ahead shall be stubble uh-huh and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the lord of hosts saith who now the lord of oh, hosts oh. you see that so this is the lord declaring his judgment and it's a righteous judgment so all the murdering that's happening to our people it is not going unpunished god is going to require the blood from abel all the way to righteous zecharias to now that's right. That has happened to God's people. Let's get verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. God. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Now this is talking about God's people, the righteous of his people. No weapon that is formed against us is going to prosper. Go ahead. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. The Lord says everyone that try to speak against God's people, they are going to be condemned. Go ahead. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You see that? And this is a beautiful thing. When we are walking in the love of the Lord, God says we don't have nothing to worry about. He got us. He got our back. And for those that do hurt us, he says they're going to get it. They're going to pay. Thus saith the Lord. So let's get our closing scripture, Matthew 26. This is the book of Matthew chapter 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a, a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his, di but when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahweh understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath brought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. With that, we like to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, Kwam Yashurala, Kwam Yashurala, Kwam Yashurala. All praises to the Most High God. Hallelujah. Shalom, brother. You got a quick minute for the word of God? All right.